Good morning children. Today we are starting with the, the fourth chapter of our history, Literary Heritage of India. I hope you remember the previous two topics which we discussed. The cultural heritage of India, especially the traditional handicraft and the fine arts. Then we discussed about the cultural heritage of India, the sculpture and the architecture. Now here we are discussing about literary heritage that is regarding with literature. Man's journey for expressing his thoughts or in a simple way how language developed. Page number 3030, first section. Facial expressions, gestures, symbols, drawings and sounds were few of the first forms of communication that man used to communicate his thoughts, idea, feelings and emotions to others. You know how we people are talking with each other. Now we are having a good language with each other. You can either speak in Hindi, English, Gujarati or any other Marathi or any other languages with your friends. But how this language started or evolved? We have to, for this we have to go back to many, 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 many years back. As I told you in the class, we have to start our journey in the time machine. We have to travel back and see how this language developed. When teacher is teaching in the class, you are not able to talk with your friends. But you communicate with your friends through different facial expressions, gestures, symbols, passing the chits, huh? Other different different sounds you are creating. So the same way, ancient time, people started their communication with the help of this type of expressions. Later, these things led to invention of dialects and scriptures, scripts. Later, they started symbols. Koi bhi ek symbol draw karta hai. Toh uske, for example, guy ka ek picture draw karo, toh uska meaning hai cow ya guy. Huh? So, this type of later, dheere dheere, dialects and scripts started. Over a period of time, the scripts led to the development of language. Finally, man used language and created literature in thousands of languages or over the world. Or, alag alag language mein. Ham log pehle ek language log ne benaya, uske baad uska different areas change hota hai, to language mein change hota hai. The constructive use of language led to creation of literature. From ancient time onwards, Indian literature is world famous for its diversity and uniqueness. Indian scholars divided ancient literature into two that is Vedic literature and a classic literature. Iske alawa, hamare paas dosera aurek literature hai that is folk literature. What do you mean by folk literature? Folk literature means the myths, legends, epics, fables, folk tales which pass down by word to word or mouth to mouth through the generation is called folk literature. In India, we are having lots of, we are having a uh, folk literature ka bohot collection hai, bada collection hai. For example, uh, the heroes like Rama, Krishna uh, of his Sanskrit literature, they all are uh, our folk literature heroes. Now, have you heard about Harappan language? Hmm? The language which India was having, the ancient script which we were having, that is called the Harappan civilization or the India's most ancient script is called Harappan civilization. We have got many collection of Harappan civilization, but the saddest point is that till now, we are having no clear-cut explanation about the Harappan language which are, we are having. We are not have been deciphered explanation abhi tak hamare paas nahi hai. Wo kya likha hai? Aisa. 
language and literature while referring history we can see an emergence of variety of languages since centuries these languages influenced one another and it resulted in development of literature alag alag languages banaya uske baad wo language mein se alag alag literary forms forms bhi ho gaya as a result some new languages and literature have developed and flourished the best example is sanskrit language sanskrit language is less in use in present time but religious ceremonies and worshiping rituals are dealt in sanskrit language as you know we are having less use of sanskrit in our school we are having one paper for studying rest itna use nahi hai sanskrit language ka but many of our religious scriptures have written in sanskrit mein sanskrit mein likh kar rakha hai hamara bahut sara religious ceremonies and worshiping rituals sanskrit as an ancient yet contemporary language since man started use of languages many languages emerged many flourished and use of some vanished hum log hamara bhasha jab develop kiya tab बहुत सारा लैंग्वेजेस डेवलप किया था स्टिल नाउ सम आर यूसिंग बट एट द सेम टाइम मेनी लैंग्वेजेस हैव डिसअपियर्ड संस्कृत इज वन सच ग्रेट लैंग्वेज विच होल्ड मच इम्पॉर्टेंस इन इंडिया मेनी ग्रेट लिटररी वर्क्स वर डन इन संस्कृत इन इंडिया संस्कृत वॉज द मेन लैंग्वेज फॉर नॉलेज साइंस रिलीजन एंड फिलोसफी एस यू नो हमारे पास बहुत सारा कलेक्शन है संस्कृत के ऊपर स्पेशली रिलीजन फिलोसफी नॉलेज साइंस एक्सेट्रा अंडरलाइन द नेक्स्ट लाइन महर्षि पाणिनी वॉज ए ग्रेट संस्कृत ग्रमेरियन द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट बुक ऑफ दिस टाइम इज महर्षि पाणिनी अष्टाध्याय विच इज ए बुक ऑन संस्कृत ग्रामर which was written at the 4th century sanskrit considered as the language of aryans please underline sanskrit is considered as the language of aryans sanskrit is uh, also known as the language of sages and also the language of scholars today sanskrit language is less in use but still we are using in religious ceremonies worshiping and performing ritual it is also accepted at the international level especially in the use of computer our next topic is ancient indian literature page number 30 of your textbook veda what do you mean by veda vedas means knowledge how many vedas are there there are four vedas rigveda samveda yajurveda and atharveda veda is written in which language vedic sanskrit this is the oldest sanskrit literature and also the oldest scripture of hindu religion first one is rigveda Rigveda is the oldest of the four Vedas. It is the oldest Indian literature. It is having 1028 verses. It is a wonderful work divided into 10 divisions. Almost all the verses are prayers to God. These prayers were used during the Eknas. among the verses the verses that preach about worshiping usha usha is the goddess of dawn early morning are fascinating very interesting this work was composed by people residing in sapta sindhu region sapta means seven sindhu re- means river sindhu okay so this verses was written by the aryans those who have settled during the uh, at the place called the sapta sindhu region here they are explaining or describing about the political social and religious matters next is samveda samveda is a veda of melody and chanting 
Prayers Samveda was written to understand the process of recitation of Veda verses mentioned in Rig Veda. The way Gangotri is considered as the origin of the holiest river Ganga, Samveda is considered as the holiest origin of the music or Gangotri of music. Next is Yajur Veda. It is called the Veda of Yagnas. And the last one is Adharva Veda. Adharva Veda describes various types of rituals and sanskaras. As I told you, Vedas are divided into or four. Means we are having four Vedas. Rig Veda, Sam Veda, Yajur Veda, Athar Veda. Each Veda is divided into four sections. That is Rig Veda is divided into four, Sam Veda four, Yajur Veda four and Adharva Veda four. And that four divisions are Samhita, Brahmana or Brahmanical literature, Aryankas and the Upanishads. Now we will discuss each one in detail. First of all, Samhita. Samhita, it is a section of word Vedas consisting of mantras, hymns, prayers, etc. Second one is the Brahmanical literature. It is the, the Brahmanas are a collection of ancient Indian text with commentaries on the hymns of the four Vedas. Many Brahminical epics or literature were composed to understand the meaning of Vedic literature. This literature consists of critical appreciation based on Vedas composed in the poetic form. This is the Aryangas. Aryangas are the text of Aryas, Aryans who used to spend the last phase of life in forest. It consists of literature based on philosophy which was the result of the deep thinking of people who spent their last years in the forest. Fourth one is Upanishad or Vedanta. Upan this is commonly known as Vedanta or the meaning of this is end of Veda or the last chapters or the last part of Vedanta. Here it is explaining or giving a clear idea about the analysis of analysis the beginning of the universe mysteries of life and death materialistic and a spiritual world the earliest earliest upanishads are briharanya and chadrogya all the all are in the form of dialogue now next topic is vedangas vedangas or its meaning is Vedanga means Anga, limb, limbs of Veda, Vedaka, limbs. We are having total six Vedangas. The Vedangas literature deals with the religious practices and rituals, grammar, astrology and astronomy. It is part of the ancient Vedic education system which aimed at promoting an all-round development of the students along with a better understanding of Vedas. Now come to page number 31. After Vedas, Vedangas, see the line starting with the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. Please write the heading the great Indian epics so that you will come when you do your revision you will be able to make it easy this will help you a lot which are the two great indian epics ramayana and the mahabharata the present form of these epics can be traced back to second century ramayana as you know the story of rama the or ramachandra the king of ayodhya this is a smaller epic if we are comparing to Mahabharata. It narrates many attractive stories of adventure. The second epic of Indian literature is Mahabharata. This is the world's largest epic also. It has 1 lakh verses. 
Mahabharata is the story of Pandavas and Kauravas. The war between Pandavas and Kauravas. Iske alava uske andar baad sara small small numerous stories are there. The holy book of Hindus, the Bhagavad Gita. This is part of Mahabharata. The Gita describes deep philosophical principles. It conveys the message of achieving moksha or salvation through jnana, karma and bhakti. Both the epics have been influencing millions of Indians and literature for a long time. They have implanted motivational seeds of sanskar as in the Indians. Sanskrit language and literature grew quite a lot during the era of these two great epics. Now the next paragraph starting with during this period of Sanskrit literature. Please write the heading as Sanskrit literature. This period produced or the period of Ramayana and Mahabharata, that period has produced lots of Sanskrit literature. The Puranas played an important role in explaining initial Vedic religion of earlier time. During this period, many scriptures and Smriti Granthas were composed. For example, the book written uh, by Kaudilya, the Artha Shastra, that was the book written by Kaudilya. These all are helping giving detail about the Sanskrit literature. Same way, the Smriti Granthas are also explaining the religious teachings, laws and customs. Next paragraph is discussing about the literature of Buddha or Buddhist literature. As we have studied in our class, previous classes, the Buddhist literatures were written in which language? Pali language. And the Buddhist literature, while considering it is divided into three section, underline Tripitika. The three section is called Tripitika. Tripitika means it is, it is a combination of three books that is Sukta Pitika, Vinayak Pitika, and Abhidhama Pitika. Iske alava, Bhotsara books be. Buddhist literature ke upar likha hua hai. Next paragraph is discussing about the literature of Buddha or Buddhist literature. As we have studied in our class, previous classes, the Buddhist literatures were written in which language? Pali language. And the Buddhist literature, while considering it is divided into three section, underline Tripitika. The three section is called Tripitika. Tripitika means it is, it is a combination of three books that is Sukta Pedika, Vinayak Pedika, and Abhidhama Pedika. Iske alava, bohut sara books bhi. Buddhist literature ke upar likha hua hai. The writers like Bana but he had written the book Kadambari and Harsha Charita. Harsha Charita is the biography of King Harsha of the Gupta period. Then Bhava Bodhi wrote the book Uttara Ramacharit. Bharavi wrote the book Kirtanjaniyam. Vishagadatta wrote Mudra Rakshasa. Sudraga wrote Mircha Kadigam. Dandi's, uh, Dandi had wrote Dakshana Kumara Charita. They all are famous work in Sanskrit of the Gupta period. Owing to, to such great enrichment in Sanskrit literature, that is why the reason why Gupta period is known as the golden period of Sanskrit literature, 
because of the contribution of these famous writers like Kalidasa, Bhanabhat, Bhavabhudi, Bharavi, Vishagadatta, Shudraga, Dandi, etc. Next paragraph that is page number 31 last paragraph here we are discussing about the contribution in the period in Gujarat Gujarati language. So the heading will be Gujarati literature. Works in Gujarati literature existed since the ancient time. With time Gujarati language developed and many literary works were composed. Famous people like Narsi Mehta, Mirabai, Dayaram, Akho, Premchand, Pritham, they were the most important people of that time who had given their contribution to Gujarati literature. These people composed beautiful verses, songs, garba, narrative poems, chapas, etc. What do you mean by chapa? Chapa means small poem with many meanings. Maximum four or five line may बहुत सारा मीनिंग्स है छापास में। लेटर स्कॉलर्स लाइक नर्मद, नवलराम, किशोरलाल, मुश्रीवा, मुश्रु, मशरूवाला, महीपत्रम, पन्नालाल पटेल, उमा शंकर जोशी, महीपत्रम, रूपाराम, नीलकंठ, गोवर्धन राम, त्रिपाठी एंड मेनी अदर्स हैव एनरिच्ड गुजराती लिटरेचर विद देयर वर्क्स। Now we are moving to the last topic of today's discussion that is Dravidian literature. Which are the four Dravidian language which we are having? Tamil, Telugu, Kannada and Malayalam. These are the four Dravidian languages which we are having. Among this four languages, the oldest one is Tamil. This belonged to the early centuries of Christian era. According to Tamil literature, sages and poets of three literary fields, they are known as Sangams, used to gather and recite their compositions. Their works contained themes like politics, war and love. The famous poets and sages, they used to gather at some place and they used to share their poetic contributions and that gathering is called Sangam. As a result, the early classical Tamil literature is a group of three different types of work which include the famous Tamil literary contributions are please underline Ettu Kotei that means combination of eight poem. Ettu means eight. Second one is Tolukapiyam that is a grammar book of Tamil. Third one is Pattu Pattu. Pattu means 10, Pattu means song. Each of these three works belongs to people of three different Sangams. The Chilapadigaram and the Mani Mekhalai are the most famous work of early Tamil literature. The famous poet of that time was Tiruvalluvar. He had written the poem called Kurai which in verse deals with many aspects of life and religion of that period. With this, we come to the end of today's discussion. So here we have discussed three, four main topics that is languages and literature. Second one is ancient Indian language, Indian literature. Then we have discussed about the Brahminical literature and finally uh, in, in Brahminical literature which were the different books we have uh, written. With this we come to the end of today's discussion. If you want to follow this lesson, read the textbook and write the hard words thoroughly. Start writing the main points also. Here we are having the answer key for the 
previous day's revision test chapter 9 and 16 fill in the blanks and uh, answer in one word i have given all the first first 10 answers are there remaining things we have discussed in the textbook that is directly from the textbook so complete check it and correct the answers and complete your notebook till the now complete the books hope you understood today's section thank you